This is a demonstration of the continuous supply chain accelerator. So before we can start monitoring supply chains in real time, we need to start looking at um, the history of our sales within our supply chain. And we have some analysis to do this in Spotfire. So um, this analysis is showing you distribution of sales over time, over about a two and a half year period um, for a series of coffee shops in the Bay Area. Uh, you have a breakdown by revenue share by area, store type, and revenue and profit over time. And as you walk through this analysis, it kind of shows you some intelligence about how products have been moving uh, over the previous periods, um, what's profitable, what's not profitable. So for example, here, uh, the organic lavender is high selling and high profit, whereas the um, regular coffee is a uh, low margin uh, and low, low uh, revenue uh, product. We can look at um, some clustering algorithms to identify stores that are uh, similar to one another. Um, in this instance, you can see that the ones in this area are high sales in all of the hot beverages section, whereas the ones in this cluster are low selling in those sections. Uh, and these stores are then clustered based on the sales history that we have for them. We can look at the demand over the period of time that we're monitoring, uh, look at the trends of uh, looking forward over the, uh, a configurable period of time. In this case, we're looking at six month forecast. And we can also look at demand by product as well. We can look at what happens when we do promotions uh, and the effect of those promotions on historical uh, product sales. So in this case, we're looking at what happened when we did promotions for different types of novelty coffees. In this case, we saw an uplift of 8% uh, over the previous year's sales. We can estimate the um, promotion impact on the uh, sales by applying a lift in percent over the previous forecast. So you can see here we've got uh, the San Jose distribution center without the promotion impact where our sales are kind of on a downward trend. But once we kind of apply the promotion, we're now uh, operating more on a, a level uh, forward trend. We can look at demand forecasts as well on individual store basis. So in this case, what we're trying to do is predict the demand forecast for each store for the next month. Uh, and this is based on the historical data that we have available, uh, and it uses spot fire forecasting in order to predict what kind of uh, unit delivery we're going to need to be able to support from our distribution centers in the next month. So once we know that information, then we can then start allocating stores to different distribution centers based on some constrained optimization. So in this case, we can choose the centers that we want to have active. Uh, and I keep choosing these until we reach a minimum capacity that's going to turn this green. Um, so at this point, we now have enough stores selected in order to support the estimated forecast for units that we're going to need to provide to these stores um, based on 24,000 units per distribution center. Once you do that, you can do a calculate assignments, which will then allocate stores to each one of those distribution centers. Uh, and we're using an optimized by distance algorithm here, but we can also optimize by time as well. So you can see in this scenario, our total travel distance is about 4,200 kilometers uh, in order to service all of the stores for the next month. We can do different scenarios here by choosing some different distribution centers, calculate some different assignments. So you can see adding those two extra distribution centers has dropped the total travel time, travel distance to 2,400 kilometers. Um, and then once we're happy with the allocations, we can click this button, which will then send that across to the streaming platform so that we then allocate orders to the correct distribution centers based on our constrained optimization.